The problem reads 1.65 moles of an ideal gas for which CVM is 3R over 2 is subjected to two successive changes in state. The first one, from 39 degrees Celsius and 100 times 10 to the 3 pascals, the gas is expanded isothermally against a constant pressure of 16.5 times 10 to the 3 pascals to twice its initial volume. Process 2. At the end of the previous process, the gas is cooled at constant volume from 39 degrees Celsius to minus 25 degrees Celsius. Calculate Q, W, Delta U, and Delta H for each state and for the complete process. Okay, let's write down what we have. We have N equals 1.65 moles. We have an ideal gas. We have CVM is 3R over 2. And first one, we go from T1 is equal to 39.0 degrees Celsius and it's expanded isothermally. So T2, so this is also T2, and we also have P1, 100 times 10 to the 3 pascals, and we have no information about P2. What do we have? We have P external is 16.5 times 10 to the 3 pascals, and twice its initial volume. So how do we write that? Let's, so V1 is V1. We don't know how much it is. We do know that V2 equals 2 times V1. Okay, so that's process 1. And then process 2 says that the gas is constant volume. So we have constant volume here on this one. And we have uh, T3 equals minus 25 degrees Celsius. So this is all of our information, including ideal gas. The first process is isothermal, and the second process is isohoric. isohoric. So let's look at the first process. To calculate, first thing we know is that the process is isothermal. Isothermal means it's not exothermal, it's not endothermal, it's isothermal. So delta H, the change in enthalpy, is zero. The next thing we know is that it's an ideal gas. And we know something about an ideal gas and delta H. We saw that in the previous problem. An ideal gas, we have delta H equals, and we can use any of the formulas, but delta U plus, and now we can use NR delta T to get this part. So we're going to choose to use NR delta T. We could have used delta PV. And the idea is that this is zero because it's isothermal. This is zero because it's isothermal. So isothermal plus ideal gas gives us delta U equal to zero. So these are our first two results, delta H equals zero and delta U equals zero. So we are left looking for W and Q, and we also know that delta U equals W plus Q, so all we really need to do is find either, because delta U equals Q plus W, and we have delta U equals zero, so finding one gives us the other one. What do we have here in our process? We have P external, and we have the volume changes. Do we have something that uses these two? And the answer is yes, we have W equals minus P external times delta V. Now, we're going to use that. So how much do we have? We have W equals minus 16.5 times 10 to the 3 pascals. That's P external. And V2 minus V1 is minus 16.5 10 to the 3 pascals. And we have 2V1 minus V1, so just a V1. And the question is, can we find V1, how much V1 is? 
And the answer is, well, we have an ideal gas, so that means the ideal gas law is good. That's PV equals nRT. We have P and we want V. We have N, R is a constant, and we have T. So yes, the answer is we can find it. So we have V1 equals N R T1 over P1. So let's substitute. We have 1.65 moles times 8.3146 joules per mole Kelvin. Ah, Kelvin. T1. T1 is 39 plus 273 Kelvin divided by 100.10 to the 3 Pascals. Let's first see our units. Moles cancel, Kelvins cancel, and joules first Pascals is meters cubed. So what we're going to have here is meters cubed here. So get our calculator. 1.65 times 8.3146 times parenthesis 39 plus 273 and parenthesis divided by 100 EE3 equals 0 0.428 meters cubed. 0 0.428 meters cubed is V1. And so then how much is W? W is minus 16.5 10 to the cubed pascals times meter cubed. That gives us back joules again. So we just need to multiply these two values. So get our calculator. We have the minus, we have the 0 0.423. So just times minus 16 point five E three minus seven zero six joules and so that is our answer there and that and that implies Q equals because delta U was W minus this so seven hundred and six joules it's absorbing heat doing work there's no change in enthalpy and no change in the internal energy during the first process. On to the second process. So these are our results from the first process. We have the change in enthalpy is zero, the change in internal energy is zero. We did 706 joules of work and the system absorbed 706 joules of heat. We also had the D1 is 0 0.0428 meters cubed. Now our second process has a constant volume and a change in temperature, but we don't have that volume, so let's get that volume first. That's V2, so that's twice this, and we can easily see that that's 0, 0, 0.0856 meters cubed, or you can do it on your calculator. Now the first thing we can calculate, because we're given a difference in temperature for this process, and we have CVM and N, is delta U. Delta U is equal to N times CVM times delta T. So we have 1.65 moles times 3 times 8.3146 joules per mole Kelvin divided by 2, that's CVM, and then again we're going to use the fact that these are both in Celsius, the same degree measure. So T3 is minus 25 minus 39 Kelvin. Kelvins cancel, moles cancel, and we're left with joules as we need to be. So let's calculate that. Get our calculator. So 1.65 times 3 times 8.3. 146 divided by 2 times parenthesis minus 25 minus 39 and parenthesis enter. So minus 1317 joules. Delta U 
is equal to minus 1317 joules. So that's our first answer here. How much is W? W is minus P delta V. But delta V is a 0, so W is a 0. This gives us two things. This gives us W equal to 0. And then since we know that delta U equals Q plus W, that means that Q equals delta U. So we have Q equal to one, minus 1317 one, joules. And the last thing we need to do is calculate delta H. Delta H. We have a formula for delta H similar to this, but using the specific under a constant pressure. But we have the formula that relates those two. That is delta H equals N C P M delta T. And we know that the difference between these two is C V M plus R delta T. So let's substitute and get that. We'll write it without units, so we have 1.65, and then 3 halves r plus 1 r is 5 half r, so here we have 5 halves r, and then we have the same th part here, minus 25, minus 39. So let's calculate that. So now we have 1.65 times 5 times 8.3146 divided by 2 times parenthesis minus 25 minus 39. Parenthesis, check it, enter, and it makes sense. It's bigger than this, so it's minus 2,195 joules. And that's delta H for the second process. So we have all of our things for the second process. Now we simply need to add the processes together to get the complete process. So finally, let's do these for the process. We just need to sum each of them individually. So process, the delta H is just simply the second one, minus 2195 joules. Delta U is also just the second one, minus 1317 joules. W is just the first one, minus 706 joules. And Q is a sum which we need a calculator for. So, 700, so 706 minus 1317 is minus 611 joules, minus 611 joules. So the change in enthalpy for the entire process was minus 2,195 joules. The change in the internal energy was minus 1,317 joules. It, we did work on the system. We did 706 joules worth of work, and the system released 611 joules of heat. And that, as they say, is that.